Hello everybody, Millennial Republicans here, and today we are going to be looking at a video of Kate, not even going to pronounce that last name, on Sky News discussing women's health. Yeah, this is going to be fucking great. Cancer in women is rising six times faster than in men due to unhealthy lifestyles. <laughs> Data published by Cancer Research UK shows that although factors such as obesity, drinking and smoking are contributing to a rise in cancer cases among both sexes, women are bearing the brunt of the increase. Well, to discuss this, I'm joined from Edinburgh by Dr. Peter Rice, Chair of Scottish Health Action on Alcohol Problems, and Kate Smirthwaite, a feminist and comedian. Welcome to you both. Um, if I turn to you first, uh, Dr. Peter Rice, um, are you surprised by these latest statistics? No, I think we've known for some time that many of the key risk factors for, for cancers in, in women, um, tobacco and, and alcohol use, have uh, been not been falling as fast as they've been falling in men. Um, so it's not completely surprising. Cancer, of course, is also a, a thing that occurs with, with ageing. And as the population gets older, we know that rates of cancer will increase. So putting those two things together, no, these figures are not a surprise. And what exactly is the reason for it? Well, I think, uh, to deal briefly with tobacco before we move on to alcohol, the, the rates of smoking in women have, have not fallen as quickly as they have in men, and that's really continued work that, that needs to go on. I think with alcohol, while men continue to drink more than women do and experience more health problems than women, again, the... the I feel like the total share of our alcohol consumption that women are drinking ha has increased somewhat. So women's um, drinking has been on a, a, a more of an upward trend than men's drinking has, and that contributes to various cancers, in, including breast cancer in, in women. Kate, it's lifestyle that's responsible for this, this increase. I mean, how, how does that make you feel? Well, kind of not surprised, really. If you look at what is going on out there, from, uh, from Trump to Brexit, you know, uh, the pay gap's not getting smaller, the domestic violence rate isn't falling, the rape conviction rate isn't going up. Frankly, once I've been through... <laughs> not, not even, like, ten seconds into her speaking. Like, oh, my God. The, the other dude had, like, pure facts. He was in there. He was speaking, like, what is the truth? And she immediately goes off on... Oh, you know, it's not a surprise that these lifestyle changes occur because Trump, Brexit, you know, rape. Like I'm sitting, I'm sitting here, I'm getting ready for her to come on and talk about women's health, and she starts off her opening statement by saying, "Trump and Brexit." Yeah. I mean, like, can you at least stick to the topic, you idiot? Oh yeah, my God, terrible. I, and she she brings up rape. And this is one thing that pisses me off so much about, like, feminists and stuff. When they bring up rape and they're saying that there's a rape culture here in the U.S. or in the U.K., wherever, when it is not true. There, there is no rape culture, at least definitely not here in the U.S. Like, you want a rape culture, go out to, like, Saudi Arabia or something, like... I mean, they think that... Uh, do, do feminists think that rapists get put on some kind of, like, super high pedestal and get yeah. worshipped by people? No, they get fucking shunned for the rest of their lives. Yeah. They get, like... I mean, you know, the rest... Their, their, most of their lives are just completely over at, after that point. They either, they either end up rotting in prison or they get just shunned by the entire community. Exactly. And that's why there's always these, like, rapist slash pedophilia, pedophilia like, uh, watch lists every time somebody from, like, you know... Uh, somebody enters your neighborhood that was accused of something like that before. You know, it's just they they act like we live in a rape culture where, we, where people just say, "Oh, this is okay, this is great." It's one of the like it's put a, uh, put on a standard of one of the highest, um, what do you call it, like trials and whatnot that yeah. you have to face if you were um, accused of it. It's yeah, terrible. Exactly. What I mean, talking about? these people who get put on the watch list, like people will not talk to them. They'll stay away from them. They'll insult them. They'll they'll treat them like absolute shit. Like, I mean, not that they don't deserve it after what they've done, but like, they they will get treated like shit for the rest of their lives for what they did. And I mean, this this could happen to someone who's maybe like twenty, you know, having sex with like a fourteen year old or something, that lied about her age or some shit, and. uh it would uh it it would fuck up it would fuck up his entire life if you know they decided to have sex and then someone else learned that they did and she was underage i mean it, and it not could... to mention 
and not to mention false rape accusations. Yeah. I mean, oh my God, those are oh, those are even the worst. I mean, a female could just, without any plain flat out evidence, just go say, oh, this person raped me, and it automatically goes to court through the super long trial and everything. You know, if somebody, if that's how, if we lived in a rape culture, that kind of stuff wouldn't happen. Yeah. Rape culture does not exist here in the U.S. It's taken extremely seriously, and people that are, um, people that are, what do you call it? People that are uh, confronted about it and whatnot, they are sentenced to the worst kind of possible punishment. I mean, it's only the truth. Yeah, I mean, let's just, let's just hear what else she has to say. That I could do with a gin and tonic. Um, I'm pretty much not surprised uh, to hear that women are drinking more. And we should also remember that historically, a lot of the reasons why women were drinking less was because they, they didn't have so much money, they were trapped in the home, and because culturally women didn't feel able to go out to bars and whatever, you know, it was, it was not seen as a safe or sensible thing for women to do. So when we say women are getting more health problems related to alcohol, we should be aware that they also have the freedom to go and drink alcohol when perhaps they didn't so much. It's like saying there's very few hand gliding injuries in prison. Well, that's not a reason to put everybody in prison so they won't have hand gliding injuries. It's a reason to make sure um, that people are aware of the dangers and they know what choices they're making. But we should also bear in mind, um, you know, as, as the other guest said, that, uh, that men still get 16% uh, more cancer than women and, and in fact men die 40% more often from cancer than women do in the UK. So although, although women are catching up faster, um, you know, it's actually, it's actually sort of sexist almost to talk about cancer as being a women's issue because it's actually looking at the numbers it's a men's issue and and we know this very i think that's the smartest thing i've ever heard her say <laughs> that like that it's sexist to talk about it as a woman's issue now i've seen one of her past videos where she made this mistake and peter just destroyed like i think it was peter lloyd just destroyed the shit out of her because she was acting like you know this uh i can't even remember what it was but it was like the situation was only related to men and she, she finally decided to own up to it in this video. And if she doesn't, like, if she denies it, then she obviously just contradicted herself in this video where it's, like, it is sexist to, to consider it just a women's issue if it's, uh, if it's something like cancer. Like, I mean, yeah, m men still have it more often. I, I just, I don't have anything to say. You could just keep going. Right. This is terrible. I'm at a loss for words, honestly. Yeah issues going there and one really big one is the not going to the doctor's business guys sat on the sofa they know there's a lump where they don't think there ought to be a lump um, and rather than showing it to their friendly family doctor uh, they sit there and scratch it and have another beer and try to pretend it doesn't exist and I think there's a really important message for everybody really that is if, you, if you're worried about anything and make sure you get some attention on, on the issue now, now she just killed what she said by saying that you know men will sit there and say, oh, you know, it's just there, and you know, sit and drink beer, like, like... <laughs> That's not even, I don't understand what she's even trying to say here. That's not even a men to woman issue. That's only, that just depends that, on your personality. There's yeah. so many, there's so many women out there that I, that I've, like, been in contact with or I know that 100% most of the time, if, some, if they have some kind of issue going on with, you know, their body or themselves, they'll just put it off for a little bit and hope it just, you know, fixes yeah. itself. And I've seen a lot of guys where the second that they have some kind of issue or they feel something abnormal with themselves, they automatically rush to the doctor and try to get a checkup. Exactly. That, I, I that was just her that. being sexist. I mean, just, yeah, uh, the, oh, she can't be. Don't say that. Seriously, oh, dude. I, I'm it's sorry. It's a woman. She can't be sexist. <laughs> Women can't be Come sexist. On, I am man. so sorry. Jeez, dude. <laughs> Excuse, just like I black also people forgot can't be racist. Canadian. Just like black people can't be racist. <laughs> yeah. Only white people are racist and are only white men are the ones that are completely yeah. misogynistic and sexist. Like, come on. Yeah, I, I got my privilege card in this little envelope here, so don't worry yeah, about seriously, it. Yeah, seriously, check your privilege, man. <laughs> God. But, no, yeah. but in all seriousness, though, I mean, her saying that is completely sexist. It's just flat-out sexist. That's what it comes down to. When she, you know, saying some kind of stuff like that is just completely horrible. Or that's like, you know, me saying, oh, well, most of the time that I've spent on this earth, I've just seen mostly women in the kitchen and men out there doing work, you know? It's, that's, yeah. that's like pretty much the exact same concept. She's trying to throw this stuff into, she's trying to mix this uh, thing into a, into a gender kind of role when it's really just, all that it is is the kind of personality that you have, what you yeah. think is right, what you think is wrong. Should you, you know, should you stay at home and not worry about this thing, let it fix itself so you can save some money off a doctor checkup or should you go check it out right away before it gets worse, you know? It's just, that's just the kind of person that you are. 
I, I mean, she just pretty much told us that all men are lazy and, you know, don't care about their problems and just put it off and drink another beer and, you know, watch the game or whatever the fuck yeah, she thinks we do. Pretty much. <laughs> uh, Dr. Peter Rice, are we talking about cancers that are peculiar to women, cancers that are specific to women, i.e. breast cancer, ovarian cancer? Is that the area or is it cancer across the board? Well, it's, it's, it's both. It's cancer across the board, uh, but breast cancer is, is a very common cancer in women. It's often it's identified much better than it used to be. It's treated better than it used to be. The survival rates are much better than it used to be. But um, that is a, a, a cancer where we know alcohol consumption, really starting from any level, increases your, 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 your risk of breast cancer, amongst many other factors. Um, but so, yes, it's cancers across the board that, that affect both, both genders, uh, liver cancer, bowel cancer, uh, cancer of the mouth, cancer of the throat. But breast cancer, I think the recognition of the association is a relatively new finding. Maybe the last 10 years or so, really, our awareness of that's been increasing. So that, if you like, has, has been the new bit of information that I think women need to take on board. That if they're looking to reduce their cancer risk, in particular breast cancer risk, paying attention to their alcohol consumption should be part of that. And Kate, what would your advice be to uh, young women, uh, women of any age? Would it be to not drink uh, and not smoke? Or, or do you think that is patronising, as you were sort of alluding to a little bit earlier? No, I, I, I think that the, what we can't do is kind of just tell people, well, you shouldn't do this. You know, when, with, when it comes to smoking, we all know that telling people not to smoke it has some impact, um, but what's much more significant is things like, um, you know, banning smoking in indoor spaces, all this kind of stuff. And I think actually we could be looking at some of the same measures when it comes to Britain's obesity crisis for men and women. You know, um, I, personally, I love to play sport and a lot of the time I can't because it's so expensive, you know, um, gym memberships, joining a sports club. There's a real lack of funding, um, especially for women's sports a lot of the time. You I think there's a lot a that we you can, can do. You can go and run outside, you know, Kate. You can run outside. <laughs> oh. That's, if that's, a, that's a wonderful suggestion. If you'd like to come round my area and stop <laughs> dozens of men from whistling at me, harassing me, bothering me, trying to block my path and get in my way, I would love to... <laughs> She's serious? I would, like, I would like her to just stick a fat-ass GoPro on her head yeah. and just record all these people I, that are I, doing this kind I of would, stuff. Yeah. She, she seriously just lives in some kind of fantasy world where all this kind of stuff actually happens, yeah. and it really just doesn't. I mean, okay? just look at her yeah. face right now. <laughs> I mean, yeah, there's a couple bad apples that fall off the tree, and, you know, yeah. uh, we'll, we'll, we'll catcall and stuff like that and do this and that. But you know what's the solution to that? You just fucking ignore them, exactly. okay? Maybe like three out of ten guys are gonna cat call at you, and maybe like one out of those ten guys are actually gonna try to like physically grab you or do something like that to you or block your path, like she says. Who the fuck blocks in this path? Mm. Nobody does that, okay? This kind of shit doesn't just happen. You don't just go out on the street and see 50 men and 50 out of 50 of those men all just whistle at you and shit like that and call you all these cat calls and stuff like that. It just doesn't happen. I don't know what kind of fantasy world she's trying to live in or she's kind of trying to share with us. Yeah. I mean, I'm not going to... She does have some good points. I mean, this isn't the worst video I've seen of her, and she's not Steve Shive's level of, like, gone. Like, she, she has some very... She has some very, like, decent points. Like, you know, where it comes to, like, you know... Uh, what was it earlier where she was talking about how, uh, you know, women have more money to spend, which makes sense because, you know, the... You know, wage gap is bullshit. But uh, besides that, uh, you know, they have more this more money to spend. So yeah, they go out and it feels safer to them, so on and so forth. You know, that that those are valid points. I can see those like being true. I can't completely disagree with everything she says, but you know, like some she says this stupid stuff like, where she she's definitely like gone somewhere on the left. Where you wonder where she goes to believe in this stuff and this this running shit, like oh you know, pr pretty much everything you said is just like you know the odds of it happening are just a lot slimmer than she makes it out to be. Like it might have happened once in her life and that's why she's saying it. Yeah, no. It's... All right, we're almost done.
to go running, but, but it, it's really a very unpleasant experience, actually, and I'm, I'm glad some women have found a space they can do it in, and, and good luck to them, and whatever, but I, no, I gave up running years ago because I just couldn't, and I'm not the sort of person who can just jog past and not respond, so all that happened was I ended up in a large number of possibly quite good, you know, calorie-burning arguments uh, with men outside building sites and cafes, so it's, there's just an attitude out there that needs to be challenged about women taking part in sport and when I travel up and down the country doing comedy so often I'm at the motorway services and I see big groups of guys come in with their matching shirts and they're obviously off on the road um, playing sport of some kind and I think you know it would be great if I saw more groups of women doing the same thing you know for for social reasons for bonding reasons for fun reasons but also because it's okay. so great for your health okay, to be I, a part of that. I think we need to get you some good noise reduction uh, headphones so you can go out <laughs> jogging. Um, Dr Peter Ryan. <laughs> thank you very much. We all should be a lot healthier. Kate Smurthwaite, thanks for your contribution. I really like this house. Yeah. But, um, but you know what? Okay, she made one fairly good point there. She said that she she wants to see more women out there playing, you know, playing sports, doing this and kind of stuff, and uh, because it'll be healthier for them. And I yep. totally agree. Yep. And that makes perfect sense with me. But the problem is, women are gen just genetically, you know, the way they're made is just, you know, they're less physically stronger than men. And this is just fact. They're less physically stronger than men. They're gonna be, um, they're gonna be found much less out of. Uh, jobs that require a lot of physical condition, you know, like construction, mm -hmm. going down into like, uh, you know, fixing sewers, doing that kind of stuff, getting out draining, all that kind of, all that kind of, kind of stuff. They're not going to be seen there very much. And that's all because it's so physically demanding, you know, and that's the exact same thing with sport. It'd be great if they all went into sport, you know, this kind of stuff. And because it would, it would be perfect for their health, you know, they, you know, get a good workout, they'll it might strive them to get into like a diet or anything like that to keep their body going to play even better in their in their sport but you know the reason that and like she was saying earlier it's not funded as much you know as men yeah. i mean i agree with that that's also true it's not fun it's not funded as much because it's not as it's not as popular yep. okay if you're going to look at people if you're going to interview like 100 people whether they would rather go to a nba championship game or would they Go to or game a game seven NBA championship or a game seven you know WNBA championship. Who are they going to pick? I mean, let's be honest. Now they're going to go for the NBA game. You know, it's a lot more funded. It's a lot more this and that. And I don't think that's really fair. But at the same time, it's just most people don't want to go out and see that kind of stuff. You know, most people just want to see male athletes. You know, they're more athletic. They can do more. They can do get get stuff done more. You know, like dunking, doing all this kind of flashy stuff on the court. And it's just it's the exact same with any other sport, you know. That's just how it simply is, and you can't get you can't get, get can't get past that. No matter how much testosterone you freaking pump into yourself. Yeah. So I mean, it's she makes that a good point, but mm. the rest of the stuff that she's saying is just it's you know it's just genuinely not true that you go out into the street for a job yeah. and you get catcalled. I mean, it's 2017. Yeah. People don't even leave their house anymore. <laughs> <laughs> And the the sad part is, she even admits to herself, like, she's like, I, I'm not the type of person not to respond, and it's like, then it's your own fault. Like, you yeah, can easily like, run away from that situation, or walk away from that situation, and, you know, know. not deal with it, but, like... Like, okay, first off, if and that, that's, that's exactly a perfect point, because if you're talking to these guys and you're getting them into these heated arguments, it's only going to fuel them more to want to do it even more, yep. you know? Like, what's the point of arguing them? If you just run, if you're just jogging, you know, and somebody cat calls you or something like that, and you just keep jogging, and you know, you act like you don't hear them and whatnot, you completely ignore them, then they're gonna, they're gonna think, oh, okay, well, that didn't work out. Uh, I guess maybe I should, maybe I should try it as a different approach, you know, or something like that. And then the next female he sees jogging, he walks up to her and you know asks her like, how was your day? Or like, oh, you look very, you know, pretty or some shit like that. You know, I don't know kind of fag shit people say these days but um it's like <laughs> it's like you know that kind of stuff you just go you know he'll have a different approach to it but if you do that kind of stuff it's just going to fuel him more and more getting into these arguments and stuff like that and that's just not the way to approach it you know it's just character that's really all it yeah. comes down to yeah i mean it's it's mostly on her for the cat calling thing like i said she's she's made a few good couple points here which I was actually kind of surprised on because the last couple of videos I've watched with her, I thought she was just plain old retarded. But at least at least she's not Steve Shives. Uh, Steve Shives is pretty much gone on the left side. <laughs> yeah, he's he's gone. He's in a different universe. Yeah. 
And uh, I still don't know how she calls herself a comedian because I don't think she said one funny thing in this entire video. I, it's just, dude, honestly, like, you know, if if I go out into the street and like, or if I'm at school or something, and my friend or one of my like friends that are girls, you know, say that, oh, that my one of my friends like you or something like that, and I go see her and she's like super fat or something. Not that I have you know anything against fat girls. I mean, you know, we all like a little chubby, but <laughs> at the end of the day, I'm just not. That's not like my type, you know. I wouldn't want to date a super like oversized girl. And then, you know, and then she just keeps coming on to me or something like that, talking about, oh, did you know, do this, do that. And she keeps texting me and stuff like that. Am I supposed to go on air like this and complain about it? Yeah. No, I just keep that shit to myself. But I'm just uh, like, and I just try to figure out an inner, you know, kind of a solution to it. <laughs> now you're supposed to be open with your emotions. We're supposed to tell everyone everything so that yeah, they can understand yeah. us. They can exactly. help us. There's, yeah. no, there's no need to figure it out yourself anymore. Nothing. We are babying everyone. We are teaching them that we need help in every way from everyone. Just go up to a random stranger, tell them, you know, I have this problem. I. Oh. This girl. Oh, you got it. <laughs> oh, you guys, you guys, you guys lost in this uh, basketball game in the finals by uh, 800 points. Well, it's all right. Everybody gets a trophy for participation. Here you go, <laughs> right there. Here's one. There's one up there. There you go. All you guys. Yep, there we go. Like, don't get me wrong. Uh, okay. I look up right now. I see four different basketball trophies hung on my wall. Every single one of those is because I either won a championship or I came first or, or my team came first in the tournament. Okay? Those are the only ones I have. Because back then, people, shit wasn't so pussified as much as it is now. Okay? Like, you know, 10 years ago or eight years ago, it wasn't so you know, babyish and shit like that. I was like, I was like seven years old at the time. And when I lost, I didn't get shit, but a sad fucking face and a towel to walk home with. That's it. Yeah. But that built my character. That made me understand, you know, life isn't fair. I don't, I don't just get stuff for participating. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's just like, it's just, that's just how pussified everything's gotten recently. It's terrible. Uh, it's, it's just like, you know, I understand going to like, you know, a psychiatrist and stuff, you know, in case you have like some sort of mental health issues to get some help there because, you know, you've tried to do it on your own. You can't, you need a little bit of help. But stuff, stuff like that where they're just, like, rewarding you for nothing only makes things worse. Like, Yeah, you just don't know how to take a loss, and you just feel like the world owes you something every time you get into something. It's just so uh, stupid. It's such a stupid... just like liberals. Yeah, it's just such a stupid way of looking at life. All right, <sighs> before we get too off on a tangent here, let's just end it here and, uh, you know... Well, you, you okay? You have to put the cursor over the thing again. That was too funny. I need to see oh, that one more time. Yes. But yeah, I need to see it. Let's see. <laughs> <laughs> All right. We'll see you guys next time. Peace. Oh my God. I'll see you guys. <laughs>